Hello, old people. It's old man Curtis and old man Dan. And we are back again with Tabletop Tuesday. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bad pour. Oh, way too much head in that. I was trying to pour it loud so that you could actually hear it on my mic, but it just gave myself too much head. Instead, instead you just ruined your beverage. I did. I ruined it. It's awful. It's all head. Uh, what are you drinking today, Dan? Uh, hi, Curtis. Thanks for asking. Uh, I am currently enjoying today a Voodoo Ranger Juicy Haze IPA from New Belgium. Yeah, no, that's a good beer. Makers of Fat Tire, I think, is probably probably their most well-known offer. It's certainly the one I've consumed the most. Um, but yes, that is what I'm having. Excellent. And you? I'm enjoying some of Portland's Whoa. finest tap water. <laughs> and, I'm really uh, disappointed. Keep you it keep hydrated. drinking water. I just haven't had a lot of booze in the house lately because I've been I've been hustling, hustling yeah, like a mother. That's right. I mean, I guess if you're you have responsibilities, work responsibilities during the day, so yeah. So it's really hard to uh, well that and and when we have been drinking, we've been usually like hitting it up. So you know. I get that six pack and it's gone by the end of the weekend. It's not. It's not hanging around, and I haven't been like bulk buying. Mm -hmm. So you know, okay. it's been. It's been a thing. It's been a thing. Hey Curtis. But, yeah. Oh yeah. No. You. I was. I was gonna do what you're about to do. Do it. I think. I want to hear your version. No, I just wanted to know how you how your progress went. We are trucking along. I hope so, with our. So Dan, are you saying it's time for our weekly progress report? Uh, I do have quite a bit of progress to make this week. I am happy to say I met my goal. I 100% met my goal. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. So 17 miniatures were painted this last week. What? Yeah. Yeah. 17 picture, paint, uh, miniatures were painted this week. Wow. And, uh, until I get the new OBS settings set up so that, uh, so that we can record through that... Uh, are you ready for a slideshow? <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So first up, this is Thud. Thud. Uh, Thud yep. got finished. Uh, you can see that he's got his his grenade launcher. Yeah. Uh, he's got his standard squad marking for uh, uh, for his squad, and then he's also got the uh, crossbones marking for being a lethal adversary. Now, of course, he's going to have to live up to that as we go, but uh, but yeah, this is just an extra uh, person for my my veterans squad. Okay. Uh, for my Imperial Guard army, since the Codex is now released, although I don't have it yet because I don't want to buy the whole army set. I just want the book. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. here you can see him from the side and from the back. He's got his big old grenade, extra extra ammo right there. Is that what that is? Yeah, it's it an extra. It looks like it looks like uh, maybe a, a, a pop up uh, photo background. <laughs> right? No kidding. One of those no, it's just ones. it's just another one of these things. So you oh, can just I see. Pop it out real quick. I got it. Okay. Oh, oh, there's there's heft to it. I see it now from that side angle. Yeah, it looks like yeah. he's got a, a big drum on his butt. Yep, yep. He does, indeed does have a big drum on his butt. Thud got so, back. So yeah, so he's he's all set and all done. Uh, and then uh, and then we got into the Geller Pox, and here's here's the first set. So oh, bot flies. There are three different. No, I'm sorry. Four different griblies, and three of the four sets of griblies are actually considered equipment. When what when you really? play, so these flies are actually equipment that I can buy for my Geller Pox infected. Instead of like grenades and stuff, I get bugs and griblies. Okay. So this is the group of four together, uh, but there are some interesting, like, details that are present on these. So here is a swarm of flies that have just finished devouring the head of one of the uh, uh, armsmen from. A rogue trader, actually, but it also matches pretty well with the the navy armsmen that come in the new into the box, okay. uh, into the dark box. Uh, so you can see we've got slime here 
from maggots that are coming out of his head. Yeah. A little bit of a better picture here where you can see like his skull teeth right there, the cracks in his visor. Yeah. And then more of the worms. And I put liberal slime all over <laughs> these things. And the picture doesn't show it very well, but it's shiny. There is okay. some gloss varnish on there to make that a real shiny mess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also, something you're probably going to notice is that I have the decking, but I made it so that rust and and like grossness radiates from wherever the flies were. I can so you see can that. See, That's very yeah. well done. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's good time. Uh, this is a pack of flies that just devoured an entire body. Uh huh. Yeah, this was done wow. with some some That's apothecary white lot. and uh, uh, apothecary white contrast paint, with the bodies being done with black templar, and uh, and then some yellow ink to make the eyes, and it just all kind of swarmed in like that. Wow. Uh, now we have the fleas. The gribbly fleas. <laughs> These are just uh -huh. a bunch of giant fleas. Uh, again, liberal use of slime around their mouths and stuff. There aren't any neat details about these guys, so there's no further close-ups. Okay. But then we get into the well, worms. How large are these compared to a Space Marine fi figure? Are those on a standard base? These are on a 25-millimeter base. Um, okay. They are less than half an inch tall. Okay. Yeah. So they all fit like they're I stack short. them. Yeah, they're really small. But they're they're really tiny. Okay. The bases are. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Uh, so the worms are kind of my favorite. Uh, they have areas of slime. They've got things that are that are attached to them. They've got some spitters. Like the the spit mm -hmm. here is really neat. Again. Yeah. Liberal use of of, uh, of gloss varnish on that in 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 public, uh, but we've got a couple neat details on these two. So this uh. is two different worms together. That's the mouth of that worm. This one's the mouth of this worm. You can see the human head underneath. Yeah. Uh, and because I wanted it to look like it was actually devouring that face, that face was done. Oop. That face was done including the tongue and everything before it got slimed. So you can yes. kind of see it coming through like, uh, like, well, like the blob. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. Cause it looks like the, the worm has like expelled some goop onto like, you know, to the digestive juices onto the head to help soften it up so it can swallow it. Got it. Got to devour. Got to devour it looks, slowly. It looks good. Uh, his body goes underneath this top one, and there's a cut here. So with that, I made it kind of gross inside and then added the, uh, mm. what's it called? Nurgle's Rot Slime right in the edges, so it's all just, he's just a mess. And then we've got that maw. This worm is just, can you imagine that coming at your face? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> Are those really eyes? Cool. So uh, I see the I see the the toothy maw, but what's that bulbous thing at the head? I'm treating it as just pussy nodules. Okay, uh, it but I did it has an abscess. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like it's just kind of it's just kind of gross. Um, and then we get into the glitchlings, which are Geller Pox Nurglings, and. With Necron heads. Well, that's kind of the thing, right? Originally, when I painted them, I didn't really. I, I forgot to read my information and my lore before I started painting. I just started painting them up as Nurglings. But it okay. turns out that they're Nurglings that wear little metal masks okay. because they're hanging out with Gellerpox infected, which are all, you know, uh, they're combined with machinery. Oh. So these little Nurglings, they pop on a little metal helmet and they go, uh, yeah, I'm a glitchling. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I'm one of you. Uh, and so this one is neat. Because he's torn the face off of the guy underneath him. And you could see the eyeball popped out. Oh, yeah. You could see his gross everything. Uh, and it gets even better. Because on the back of the head, you can see <laughs> his flesh and where he punched through. <laughs> Look at so it's all just spilling pussy, out. Pussy warts on his butt. Oh, yeah. Dude. Yeah, he's so gross. Dude. So gross. 
It's so good. <laughs> and then his skin, all the all the glitchlings have the back of their their back skin yes. pinned to the tip of the uh, to the tip of the mask. It's yes. just such a neat such a neat thing. It is it's a really interesting design. And I like how uh, at his spine, it looks like his flesh has started to split down the spine, and he's got it stapled together in two places. Yeah, yeah, got to hold it all together. Got to, oh, he also has a wooden leg. That is so um, foul. But we get we get a better look at that later. Um, this is this guy has uh, a broken bottle mm-hmm. to use to stab people, <laughs> and, and that's his. Everybody's got the warty butt. Yeah, lots of warty well, butts. You know, it's, they don't bathe. Not really. That's what happens. Yeah. With bed sores. That's how Nurgle gets you. Yeah. Now here's this. Hey, those are my gifts favorite. from the grand. Those are gifts from the grandfather. <gasps> Absolutely. He's got a wooden. He's got a, he's got wooden, a wooden Zelda sword. sword. He's he got does. the Zelda. The very first Link's very first sword. <laughs> Is that Link? Uh, and not anymore. Legend I mean, of Zelda and Warhammer 40k take place in the same universe. Confirmed. Right here. <laughs> Hashtag confirmed. Hashtag canon. <laughs> Uh, and he's also got a wooden peg leg, uh-huh. uh, which happened to be is a that a thing peg leg? This. That's not just like his his the the he's his flesh has been removed, and that's just like a yeah no you can really see the wood stump. grain on the back half. Okay. Uh, wow. Oh my god! Yeah. Wow, that wooden sword looks really good. Thank you. You did a, you did a good job put like painting the grain on it, and it, it immediately looks like a wooden sword. Uh, contrast paints make this kind of work surprisingly easy. A mm. little bit or, of contrast paint, paints if you're and an then, army painter guy. <laughs> totally. Or gal, army painter user. Uh, and then I did just a little bit of dry brush to really get that that like used worn yeah. look on the edge. Yeah. And then we've got uh Captain Two Head here with all uh. of his guts falling out and everything. Um my favorite part about this in particular model, though, is he's got a little gross anus. <laughs> and I, again, used uh, what? Nurgle's Rot and <laughs> Gloss Varnish to really make sure that that's highlighted. On, so he's uh, got three that because there's there's I see two very distinct. He's butts. got two butts and then just something that's just uh, making just, trouble. Just a se- Yeah. OK. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That is and so then, foul. That is so foul. And uh, that is my progress for the That's week. That's amazing, Curtis. Wow, congrats. 14 models. That 17. Some, oh, 17. That took some yeah. effort. I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, it uh, they, look, they look really... Like, I'm really satisfied with how they turned out. Uh-huh. They match what I had in my head. That's a nice thing. You know, of, of, back in season one, we talked about reaching like how I wanted to get back to the height of my powers. And <laughs> I used I used uh the the witch hunters from Mordheim as my example. Right. And I'm starting to feel that come in now because things are starting to look the way I imagined them to look again. And uh and so I'm feeling like I think I may have peaked again and now I just want to keep keep heading up on this trajectory. Yeah, keep going. You've caught up to your to where you were. Now it's yeah. time now it's time to Shoot for the stars. Get even better. Go yeah. To the moon. How about your progress Go this week? Go full Casey Kasem with it. <laughs> How about your process I, this week? Uh, I completed one, two, three, seven Grey Knights. So I've got my, my full squad that I can field, plus a bonus just a car. Um, so I, I guess I'll just go through them then. Um, so my first... First Justicar, and this was this was the one that I am most excited about, just because he was my favorite character when I was playing um, Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. Uh, so that that is Ulrich. I, oh, that's gonna be really hard to see. I'll just send photos to you send for photos. everything, and, and we can swing them in. Yeah. But so I've got Ulrich Iolanthus with Iolanthus. A, with his demon hammer. So I've got him, and it's hard to tell, but I did prime him. In Army Painter, uh, Uniform Gray is the only... I I went to Emerald Knights to mm. buy Primer. And the only Army Painter Gray wa- Primer they had was Uniform Gray. So mm. that's the one I got. I, I'm not actually sure. I think there are others, because I think Nelson recommended a different one. But 
maybe I'm misremembering that and, and the name I've got in my head was the um, Games Workshop product. But anyhow, the only way I can really tell that this guy is primed is because the base is not black anymore. The color is almost identical to, so I'm like spraying and spraying. I'm like, they're not spraying. It's not really, it's not, well, anyway, they're, they're primed. Super so primed. We'll, we'll, we'll see when I start to apply uh, actual brush paint if anything sticks. Uh, then I wanted, just in case he gets injured, I wanted to have a second Justicar available. And so I've got Mithric Boars. He is also from my Chaos Gate Demon Hunter. He was my, he was my second Justicar. So he's got a force sword that is impaling the head of a... Um, it looks like a plague bearer there. Yeah, single um, eye, big horn. That's yeah. a plague bearer. Yeah, and he's got... Um, he's the only one without a helmet. I should have left Iolanthus without a helmet because it's easier to tell them apart from all the other gray knights. So I'm like, oh, there's a Justicar. There's no helmet. Uh, but anyway, so I, I did that with, with boars at least. And I kind of messed up constructing him because I placed the head before I placed the arms. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's going to be really hard to paint his face because he's holding the sword like in front of his face like this. Mm. And I had turned the face that direction. So now the hilt of the sword and his fist are right in his face. I should have turned his head so he's looking like this. But say la vie. It is what did it you is. use plastic glue or did you, you use super glue? Oh yeah, I had plastic glue. This oh, is fuck. this is a single unit now. <laughs> there was there's no getting those apart. I tried. I tried to gently force the head to pop off and it just wasn't happening. I'm like I'm just, just going to break this thing if I put any more pressure on it. So I didn't I didn't proceed. Uh, okay, so you you're allowed to field one Grey Knight's gunner in a squad in addition to one Justicar. So there will be one of those two gentlemen along with Cadden Rugen. Yeah. Who was uh, he's got a Psy cannon there. Now there's there's three different heavy weapons that the gunner can use. The Psy cannon which is more like a single target thumper. There's also the incinerator, flamethrower, standard. Everybody understands what that is. Or a silencer, which is more of a spread, like multi-target thing. You can, uh, I think it's got six attacks, and you can choose how many attacks to apply to each enemy within a certain radius. So um, kind of like that. A little bit of crowd control, potential to damage multiple enemies simultaneously get them weakened so that somebody else can one shot them so anyway, nice. that's that's rugen i do have three more uh bases available so i will be constructing a silencer and an incinerator that may or may not all be cad and rugen just with different weapons or i might grab some of the other uh purgators from my chaos gate demon hunters squad and, and name them all appropriately um, who do I want next? Okay, let's go with Voldred Storm, who was my oh, favorite yeah. interceptor from Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. So he's got he's got the little uh, the little antenna, uh, the aerials on his backpack. Those are the um, they teleport. The in interceptors teleport. So yeah. that's what these are. These are like the the local te teleport things. Now they don't teleport in kill team because you they're not interceptors they're just gray knights warriors so and anyhow but he's got the force sword so how did you find those did they did 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 you get a box of the interceptors or or did you just make those oh no these those back i just didn't see them the last time when i was going through the sprues with you in in the first episode those are in those are part of the sprues. Oh, I didn't know that. The backpacks with the aerials on them. Yeah, I, I didn't even notice it until I was starting to clip them out. And I thought, oh, excellent. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Okay. So here is an alternate interceptor backpack guy with falchions. Nice. Nice. Kind of tried to go with a dynamic pose. <laughs> and... And I, there, there was another interceptor that uh, the name is totally escaping me that I used along with Storm all the time. I paired those two guys up and they would just charge in, teleport in and just wreck stuff. 
Yeah. I can't remember what his name is. I'm totally blanking. So I'm going to have to fire up the game, load up my old save, and, and grab all these guys' names uh, before I actually uh, paint their their name. Heraldry and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, second to last is a warrior with the Force Halberd. Nice. Nice. The Force Halberd in Chaos Gate Demon Hunters allows you to first strike an enemy that gets within melee range to you. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way in Kill Team. Halberds and the swords are just generically called force weapons. Mm. The falchions are different. The demon hammer is different. The other weapon that actually has this different name that has different uh, effect is the warding stave oh, or, yeah. or staff for my fellow Americans. <laughs> it's interesting that um, staff, at least as far as I'm aware of it, staff, singular, and then stave or staves would be the plural of staff. One staff, two staves. That's and, how I learned you know, it from role playing games and stuff. Yeah, yeah. When, you know, reading Dragonlance. That's mm -hmm. how I learned it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, but but in in uh, in proper English, the word is just stave. I don't know if staff is a different. A staff is a group of people who work for you, and a and a stave is a religious stick. Anyhow, nice. <laughs> so, anyhow. So that's who I've got. I haven't named applied names to most of these guys yet. I just wanted to get my core three in there. Um, so, so that's them, uh, and then once I get and they're they're all primed, so ready to pa ready to paint, uh, and then once once I get some good progress on them, then I'll I'll build the other three, and um, that'll that'll be the full ten. The box comes with ten, so I've got nice. I've got some swap outs available, so I I can replace squad mates that suffer injuries that maybe take them out of the next mission. Nice. So, that's it. Does a silencer come in that box too? Because when I looked at the sprues the last time we did this, I didn't see the silencer on there. But you've got yep. it. There's a silencer. There's a, actually there's two. Of, no of kidding. Every, there's two of everything. There's yeah, silencer, incinerator, side cannon. It's all there. Wow. Oh, that's great. Yeah. yeah. That's fantastic. Oh, well, that's a, a hell of a box. box. It's a neat box. So uh, thanks again to my friend John for for the birthday gift. It's been nice. It's been a lot of fun putting these guys together. Uh, uh, yeah, and if if you all want to see these characters in action under the com command of of Dan, just go and check out <laughs> the uh, go check out the Chaos Gate video. Whole playlist is there, but grab any of them; they're a lot of fun. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. if we could borrow from Uncle Adam, Pachow. <laughs> Do you see? He's got a T-shirt that just has Pachow. Pachow. That's I awesome. Did. Yeah. I can't wait to to have some catchphrase organically develop itself within uh, this channel and we can have a t-shirt. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Uh, that, that channel, for people who are unfamiliar, uh, is called Tabletop Minions. Oh, you mean they can see that right here? Pachow. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We like to share the love. We, yeah. we, want it, we want you to see the people we're enjoying watching, too. Yeah. He's the one who introduced me to Sam Link, so I've got to... Uh, got to Give credit where credit is due. There, I, I watch Sam Lake's Link's uh, Twitch stream. He'll mm. he'll just paint on stream, and he'll just you know he's playing like heavy metal in the background, and and just talking about whatever the heck comes to mind. And sometimes he just goes off the rails. It's fun. <laughs> it's fun. But but you also get to see his technique, and he's he's a very talented painter. It's really wild to watch how sometimes that brush doesn't look like it's doing anything. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, oh, that looks like yeah. velvet. Or, yes. you know, that's just straight up bone now. How'd that yeah. happen? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's just it's just ba like barely flicks of of motion. And suddenly he's just got this work of art in his hand. It's, like, it's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. Painters like that are incredible. Well, speaking of painting, what are our goals for next week, Dan? Oh, gosh. Here's where I'm... I, I don't know. Uh, mm. Do we... It might help to know if we have a deadline. Do you know if or when our next gaming opportunity might be? Because 
I will know for sure next week. I feel like that because these guys all have the same armor, mm. the, the heraldry will be different, and there will be little details that are different, but the armor itself is the same. So it's not like I'm going to be painting one at a time. I could if I really wanted to focus, but I feel like these guys have to be batch painted. I, I don't, I don't know how to answer the goals question for this coming week. Cause I don't know what it's going to take <laughs> to get these guys done. I've never painted. These are the first space Marines I've ever painted. I've never painted a space Marine. Really? Nope. It's, it's always, it's been orcs. Uh, I've done a couple of Eldar. I did one test Tau. Right. And then, and then back to orcs, you know, aside from a couple of D&D &D characters, uh, miniatures. Right. That's it. That's my painting experience. So, and it's wow. been, you know, a long time. A long time. Since we started our first Kill Team game. So, yeah, I, I don't, I'm. Yeah, I don't know how to. I don't know how to set a goal for that. I, I guess just get the base coat of the armor done. Um, base coat. Well, man, not even the armor. Just base coats on everything, and then I can okay. start. Work, then I can start working on details and highlights and things like that. So we're gonna base coat these seven. Yeah. And I use the yeah. royal we in that. Dan is going to base coat his seven Color existing. Color, highlight, bleh. No, not, not even highlights. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Okay. Uh, my goal for next week is to complete the three Pel Geller Pox mutants. Mm. So I will have these three Geller Pox mutants done by, ne by our next meeting. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If they go as well as the Gribblies, I might even be able to get a start on the first of my hulks. I'm going to start with this one who's got the octopus arms. Sweet. And Sassy tentacle Malassi. face. Look at that. He's guy. also got, and, and this is going to be easier to see later, but he's also got a human trapped inside his stomach. Oh, awesome. You can see his little face peeking out with a little hand going. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> Trying so, to claw his way out. Yeah. Does that does that thing have a, a like a Cthulhu head or is it kind of sorta? What is it's, it? It's it's um, it's kind of a Cthulhu head. I mean, it's it's just tentacles, just lots and lots of tentacles that come out of yeah, the hood. That's yeah, that's somewhat Cthulhu-ish. Yeah. Possibly, see, possibly a little bit of inspiration okay. from Davy Jones from the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. One hundred percent. I mean, the way they talk about this in the lore is that. This guy just looks like he's been drowned, and so everything is wet. So and he's just a bloated. He's just bloated and corpse he, there, yeah, yeah. And he takes people into him, so he grabs them with his tentacles and then oh. puts them inside himself. <laughs> so it's like crawled into a dead whale. It's like gross. Wow. Yeah. It may smell so, bad, kid, but at least it'll keep you warm. <laughs> I don't know if it even does that. I think a Tauntaun's probably better. <laughs> so Dan's goal, get yeah. base coats on his seven. And Curtis's goal is to get his three mutants done. Wow, that's a big goal. That's a big goal. I'm wondering if I need to up. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to set myself up for failure. Because this, because this is a new experience for me, I'm, I'm going to set a very simple goal. And if I happen to exceed it, then great. But exactly. I think that's a great way to look at it. Yeah. I think that's a great way to look at it. I don't need to be weeping on episode four of Tabletop Tuesday. Right. This week. Right. I didn't get any of it done. All right. That's our weekly progress. No games for old hey, Dan, are you ready for other tabletop stuff? <laughs> What are we talking about? What are we talking about? I thought, you, okay, so one of the things that, that has come up, especially for our group, and it's become such a, a regular thing since pandemic, 
is the advent of using things like Roll20 or virtual tabletops to run tabletop RPGs. And it's such a big deal that now, uh, now that Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro own D&D Beyond, they're actually building a really advanced virtual tabletop for D&D Beyond that makes it look like you're playing on a table with miniatures, oh, even though wow. you're you're not. You're you're playing over a VTT, and the promo stills for that stuff look great. Um, I'll try and put a link into it. I don't want to get a strike by actually playing it here, but if you give it a look, it's it looks really neat, especially if you're like our group and everybody's to the four winds, but you still want to play. Yeah, but you and I, we came up. With miniatures, battle mats, dwarven forge scenery that we spent outrageous amounts of money on. Yeah. Um, well, all and that even, stuff. And even before that, Theater of the Mind, before any of that stuff even existed. Right. Right. So, so we've done it you... all, man. We've done it all. We're pros. <laughs> We're pros. We, we dabble. So what do you think of all this VTT and Roll20 and all that hoopla and whatnot? I will be honest with you. It has taken me a long time to accept it. I think it's a great idea. I just really miss sitting around a table face to face with people. Mm. I, I really had a rough time uh, getting used to roll 20 and just, it, it just felt so impersonal mm. to, be playing a game like that over the internet different from a playing a video game in co-op with other people because you it's you're already removed because in in general you're you're not your face isn't on camera it's just you're embodying this digital character with these virtual tabletop systems you're probably your face is on camera and you're just looking at your friends and you've got your map and everything. And it just, it just felt like there was a wall between everybody and you got the lag. So that makes it difficult. And it's only really been within the last few months that I've allowed myself to embrace it because really it's, for groups like us and for probably tens or hundreds of thousands of others around the world, this is the only option to be able to play. You either play with this or you don't play at all because your your gaming partners are too far away. Yeah, I mean it must be it must be something prevalent enough for a multi-million dollar, a multi-billion dollar multinational corporation to want to invest an outrageous yeah. amount of money yes. in in being able to create a fully realized 3D environment to be able to have people play on. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was it that ha- helped you get over the hump of Roll20 and, and using it? Was it just the fact that you were immersed in it for a long enough time that it kind of broke down? Your, uh, that, your weariness? That may be the answer. It might just have been time. I just needed time with it. And allow myself to mentally let go of wishing that we were all around a table together and being grumpy that we weren't. And just allow this to be what it is because this is our only option. And to just enjoy the experience instead of wanting something else. And uh, some of it was frustration with just the tool mm. Um, mm. that we That's were fair. using. It took me a while to get used to uh, what our, our system. We've been using Roll20, uh, which is good. It's a good system, and it has come a long way, too, from where it started. And, and it sounds like they've got more planned. So they're, they're constantly in development. And, you know, if you don't want to, I don't know. Have you heard about what uh, the one that was Wizards is developing for 
D and D Beyond? Is there going to be a price tag? It. I can imagine. I can't imagine that it will be free, given what they're putting into it. Yeah. To my knowledge, that information hasn't been released. I'll fact check that and pop it here if there's something that is new. Yeah. Um, but I do believe that it's going to be available to subscription holders of D and D Beyond. Now, whether okay. there are going to be multiple tiers of subscription, because you could already get a subscription to D and D Beyond, right? And it gives yes. you unlimited. Right. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so if you would also like to use the D and D Beyond virtual tabletop system, you know, add. 10 bucks a month to your subscription or so. I don't know. Right, right. I don't, I don't know what that amount would be. Oh, yeah. And if it's transferable, if somebody can just be the host of it and then have other people who aren't subscribers also mm-hmm. use it, or if mm-hmm. they're pushing to get everybody to be a subscriber. A lot of IP companies, we see it especially in media like Disney, Fox, HBO, etc. A lot of IP holders want you to be on a subscri- subscription service now because... The old ways to be able to make money on entertainment media aren't the money makers they once were. People will still buy physical media. Uh, there's part of me that wants to go back to buying physical media because the things that I enjoy keep disappearing from the internet. <laughs> but um, but for most use cases, people consume and then don't need it again. So making it virtual. Being able to watch it on your 85-inch screen or being able to play it on on your thing. It just makes sense to just play, pay a monthly fee and have access to all these things. So I think we're going to see a lot of, well, we're already seeing it. I was about to say we're going to see a lot of these game companies start offering it. But Games Workshop has Warhammer Plus, which is not only access to their, their uh, entertainment media, but also the apps that are associated with their two main games and wizards is going to have D and D beyond to be their subscription model. Mm -hmm. And I think as companies get bigger, you know, I don't think it will be unusual, unusual for like weird games or Mantic or anybody else to start being like, Hey, we're going to just start coming out with stuff. If you want to get the, you know, release box of whatever new faction we come out with or, or whatever, Give us thirty bucks a month, and you'll get at least one box a month, maybe two. Uh, or they, or with three D printing becoming such a popular thing for all games, maybe it's an STL thing, like they have with with uh, certain three D printing companies, where you can join their Patreon, and every month they release a certain number of STLs, and they become available to you for your subscription price. Yeah. Well, regardless of what it's, co- I mean, whatever conversation that is it is happening now or has already happened and been decided at wizards i'm sure about yeah. whether this is going to to cost and how much and what's going to be included but where i was going with that was for the majority of people roll 20 is free you can right. sign up for a free account and be a player in a game now if you want to if you want to game master and have access to all of the manuals and things, then you you need a subscription. Um, generally, a pretty low tier subscription. I don't remember the cost. Uh, it's fifty dollars a like year. Like fifty a year. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I was I was right. Okay. So, uh, and that's not that bad. No, that's not bad at all. That's yeah. So, um, the, it's it is a good option for people who don't have any other yeah they they could very easily gouge those folks the people who don't have another choice yeah but they've 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 taken the high road and they've made it uh financially reasonable that's the great thing about gamers they will pay for the things they love and they will 100 percent evangelize for those things so if you treat them fairly and you give them something that works, and you, uh, if you support it in good faith, then, you know, we spent literally hundreds, if not over a thousand dollars in Dwarven Forge scenery bits. For oh, when we my did God. tabletop stuff. So much money we spent. And that was the resin heavy stuff. Totally. Oh. And how many times did one of us move with that stuff? I mean, we had it for over a decade, and it was always that whoever's house had the space 
for you know 80 pounds of resin that stuff was, and when rough. we sold it i still keep a record book there's still like 219 dollars left of the money that we sold all that stuff for wow and so i use it whenever somebody comes up and like i used it for my subscription to roll 20 i think i used it for jeff's Hmm. Your Scott, I don't know, but like every every year, we've still got like four more payments out of the Dwarven Forge money that we got on eBay uh, a decade ago, and <laughs> wow, uh, and so you know, when when there is a a functional tool, it does what it promises, and it's affordable like that. Yeah, where for the same maps that we would create. I went to the game store the other day. I saw what modern D and D scenery and figs are doing. Like character models are easy; they're three, four bucks. That's great, but the monsters, holy crap! Like uh, you, they're selling dragons and tarasks now that are like three hundred, four hundred bucks. <laughs> oh wow! Okay. Yeah, yeah, pre-painted, okay. ready to go. They're just giant statues, but it's like. I can also just grab this token that comes with the <laughs> free thing and just plop it on my VR uh, battle mat and we're good to go. Yep. yep. So, so yep. I am with you in that I really miss sitting around a table drinking sodas and, and eating pizza and being able to move the figs yep. around on the board. But I'm just glad it works. Yeah, I'm just glad that, yeah. that we still have a chance to be able to play at all. Yeah, so we've got... So, okay, so I am aware of D&D Beyond and Roll20. And if there's anybody watching who uses another one, I would like a comment below so we can take a look at it. I'm, I'm curious to know if there are other services out there. Um, the only reason we're using Roll20 is because I think it's the one that I think Scott or you found and said, why don't we try this? Yeah, it was Scott. It was definitely so, Scott. That's yeah. the only reason we're using it. So, yeah. you know, what else is out there? I'm I'm curious. But and we're already you know. paid up for the year, so we might as well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> might as well test some other things out and see how it works. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Nice. <laughs> and that was other tabletop stuff. No games for old so we haven't had uh, a tremendous amount of comments regarding the title of our next segment. So for this week again, we're going to call it Stuff We're Hyped About! No games for old <laughs> that name is still subject to change. That's just going to be our t-shirt. <laughs> that name is subject to change. <laughs> <laughs> Once we get to a thousand subscribers on the Patreon, first merch store, that name is subject to change. There you go. Put it on mugs, put it on t-shirts. Hashtags 1,000 subs by New Year's. <laughs> All right. <laughs> God. The thing that I want to talk about this week yeah. is, uh, is actually something that is, it is warhammer related okay. uh, i know normally we don't just sit in the world of warhammer but this in particular got my attention because i don't see a lot of people talking about it i've seen it mentioned in a couple blogs uh a reddit post here and there but other major youtube personalities and other major uh uh internet personalities that i frequent which isn't to say all of them because i'm actually pretty particular but there is a new assassin that's been released for Warhammer 30K, which is the Horus Heresy version. Um, and they dipped into the history, the rogue trader history of, uh, of, of 40K back in 1987. And they have a new assassin that is the old assassin. Are you ready for a slideshow? I, I am, because I don't know what you're talking about. Show so, me what you're hyped about. So, Dan, yeah. back in uh, in the Rogue Trader days and early 40K, 
they had all kinds of characters. We had uh, the earliest Inquisitor was Inspector Obi-Wan Clouseau. Uh, you know, we Sherlock. had female space marine. Thank you. Thank you. Sher- Obi- was it Wan- Sherlock, Sherlock Obi-Wan, Obi-Wan Clouseau? Clouseau. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, That's a had... groaner. It... <laughs> that is a groaner. There, there were a lot of drugs in the 80s. <laughs> And uh, so there was that there were there were female space marines, uh, unironically, yeah. like they they were yeah. just that's how that was. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a big topic of conversation on Twitter right now. I don't think I want to get in that fight at the moment. No, um, but no, uh, no, I just let uh, that one be. And then we had space marines that were hybrids of humans and Eldar, like, you know, everything. It was just. Ooh. Wherever we could, wherever wherever Games Workshop could grab some kind of sci-fi idea, they would grab it, they would pull it in, they would adapt it, and they would use it. Well, what they did was they made an assassin that looked like a ninja. Observe. So this is okay. a panel that was taken from uh, an old white dwarf, and you can see it's got the general body glove. We got our our ninja mask. He's got a sword on his back. He's got a gun. Uh, similar weaponry, actually, to what eventually became the Evasaur assassin. Okay. But he's got little sandal shoes on. <laughs> oh, my he's got God. Little sandals. Okay. Oh, my so gosh. So here is a look at the raw metal, uh, raw metal mini. Wow. And then here's a... I had to scrape the internet for these images, so... They're not all they're not all pristine, uh, but here's one of somebody did a modern painting of it, and this is mm-hmm. what it looks like on the back. So he's got a little backpack on, skull, sword, again little sandals, little sandals. <laughs> so they dip back into the lore, and we get this new assassin. Check him out. Ooh. Now this is an Adamus assassin. I uh, like. I don't really know what the words mean. The dynamism of this sculpt, the, like there the is new, some kinetic yeah. energy in this. Yeah, yeah. No, it looks really good. It looks really good. Like I already have a full set of second edition assassins that I like just fine, mm-hmm. and there are no rules for him. To, I mean, I would probably just use him as an Evasaur in 40k anyway. Because I don't play 30k, but he looks great. Yeah, um, yeah. I, will I like say, the I like the blue highlighting on the black armor. It right? Looks, it, yeah, it looks like uh, moonlight reflection rather than sunlight reflection. Yeah, so and definitely the, operating at night. The little detail of like the blackout around his eyes. Yes, he did a Batman. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, I am not the only one who's made that observation. That is can, that is that is on the internet. But actually, uh, from this angle, uh, if you you paint him red and black, that's Deathstroke. Okay. Other people have totally done him up as uh, Deadpool, Deathstroke. Mm-hmm. It's a really good base for making your superhero bad guy or good guy, whatever antihero. You yeah. know what I mean. Um, one thing that I'm really disappointed in. They didn't give him the sandals. <laughs> it really does those bother are, me. It does keep it from being perfect for me. Those are impractical sandals. Regardless, regardless, it's just you can't you can't move like that in little flip flops. Come on. If we're gonna touch back, though, if we're gonna touch back, anyway, <laughs> you got to evolve, some... Curtis. Uh, like you said on a recent vampire episode of mine, evolve or die. <laughs> That's fair. That's very fair. You jack a. <laughs> uh here are some here are some detail images that you can see again we still have the backpack the sword like it's it's a really good update of that original assassin model but i yeah. don't see a lot of people talking about the fact i love the fact that they're like it's 30k it's ten thousand years earlier so let's just dip back into our earlier models yeah and uh and and make something new i think i just think it looks great so yeah. Uh, even though I don't play the game, he even has the matching hand uh, that uh, uh, you can see yes, on the, this one. The skeleton glove. Yep, 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 yep. I think it's a, it's actually a uh, uh, like a uh, neural glove. Like he grabs you and you go and get oh, you. Oh, okay. But uh, but anyway, point is, 
I just think it's it's really neat, and that is what has me hyped. Uh, <laughs> I liked the the ceremonial like green tassels and ropes around the his dagger and his mm-hmm. sword. Those are really nice details. Yeah, yeah, really it nice looks details. really cool. And really uh, cool. Uh, uh, he or she is certainly doing their squats. <laughs> <laughs> There's a muscular rear end on that on that model. Somebody put a lot of effort into sculpting that. And I think it. I just think it needs to be acknowledged. That's all. These are computer designed now, so that's a mathematically perfect uh, rump. <laughs> mathematically perfect. <laughs> oh boy. Well. Well. Okay. So what am I hyped about this week? I. I, I don't mean to keep it in the Warhammer 40k world, but. We are. That's what we're here for. The thing that caught my attention the most this week is that on November 28th, hmm. there will there is a new DLC character class being released for the video game Warhammer 40,000 Inquisitor Martyr. And this oh. is the Sororitas character class you will be able to play as a sister of battle who has all of the appropriate abilities and uh, i'm i'm assuming new voice acting and all of that so i don't know if it's going to be free for owners of the game probably not i mean the game's been out for a few years so it's it's interesting that they are now releasing a new character well, they're doing a release but to. They did an updated version for uh, consoles. new school consoles. Yes, so I'm like sure that it's in tandem for that. So yeah, yeah. So this will be out um, Thanksgiving weekend, and I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. I I played through the entirety of Inquisitor Martyr solo, mm-hmm. and I know we tried to do a co-op series for this channel with me and Scott playing, and you were gonna be Lore Master Curtis. But we were having some connectivity issues with the game. And whenever yeah. one of us uh, would, our character would die, when we would respawn, we were still in game, but not recognized by the game. So we couldn't, enemies couldn't attack us. We couldn't attack enemies. So it was like, well, that's not going to work because you, you don't not die in that game. It's just yeah. going to happen. Yeah. So it got really frustrating to try to do a series, a, a co-op series that way. So we kind of abandoned that, sadly, because I think it would have been great. But I might do a solo series with the Sororitas class. And um, I think it would be a fun other Warhammer series to do to go along with my Chaos Gate Demon Hunters playthrough. It's... it's uh... Yeah, it's certainly fun. I I like a Diablo style adventure game anyway, mm-hmm. and it was always fun just to watch you guys play. I never I never needed the anxiety of being surrounded by things and trying to stop them all. But watching you <laughs> guys push, have that pressing problem. the wrong buttons and be like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. I have way more fun yelling about it in the comments or uh, chastising you guys as I watch uh, yeah, than I do I actually doing it. Yeah, I've noticed. <laughs> I've noticed. It's you should use this ability. Burp, it's burp, 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 burp. <laughs> no backseating. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, that's what I'm excited about. I would be interested in knowing whether people would be more interested in watching a playthrough of Inquisitor Martyr with the Sororitas class or a playthrough of Warhammer 40k Mechanicus which is a turn-based strategy game similar to Chaos Gate Demon Hunters, but with the Adeptus Mechanicus as your hero units. Also, one of the highest-rated Warhammer IP games ever made. Mechanicus is? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Wow, okay. So you heard it in the comments. Let us know. If given the choice, would you rather see Mechanicus? Or a new run through of Inquisitor Martyr. Let us know in the comments. Well, it wouldn't be a new run. I mean, it's yeah. I got It'd be you. new, new for new for you, new for us. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, are you Team Sororitas or 
Team Mechanicus? I think we might get some flack on pronunciation. Sororitas? I'm probably putting a little bit too much of a Spanish uh, stank on the name. Yeah. Yeah. A, a battle Soror- sister is a battle, battle senorita. Sororitas? So, like a sorority? Yeah. Like sorority, but with an ass at the end. <laughs> As I look up, soror, it but does. everything is all pronounced Latin with a Latin pronunciation. That's why I I'm saying you tell us, soror- folks. Like the Games Workshop is the worst. Leave a about comment. Defining, let us know. They don't define. They did a couple times, <laughs> but never about the words you have questions about. They're always like, "Cadian is Cadian." You know, it's never. It's never like is it Catacan or Catachan. I is think it. I've heard it Ad- pronounced both ways by people at Games Workshop. Is it Adeptus Astartes or Adeptus Astartes? Uh, they do tend to go with the E's at the end. Astartes, Custodes, Astart- Arbides. That makes they sense. They tend to hit those. Okay. So yeah. sororities. But it, but they're they're women, so it's sororitas. That's what I was... Uh, okay. Uh, anyhow. So anyway, that's what I'm hyped about this week. Is checking that out, doing another playthrough of Martyr with uh, my Sister of Battle character. That is the safer way to say that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Imperial Guard, Space Marine, Sister of Battle. That's what's got us hyped this week. No games for old Dan, there's an elephant in the room. Oh, do you mean the channel update? Yeah, a uh, pretty major <laughs> channel update. Um <laughs> So, uh, yeah, uh, first of all, hi to all of our new subscribers. Second of all, Dan, what do you want to tell them? I, I'm gobsmacked, dumbfounded, bewildered. I don't even know what to say. I, a couple of weeks ago, old man Scott, who you will see shortly, on a, on a future episode of a different series on this channel, said, uh, we're all Mech Warrior fans, and there's Mech Warrior 5 has been out for a couple of years, and it's on sale this week. I'm just going to buy a copy for all of you, and let's play it together. Every Monday night, we all get together, and we either play our one of our VTTs, our uh, Dungeons & Dragons, we've got GURPS coming up, or we'll play video games, GTA Online, uh, Borderlands, uh, we're starting the division. So anyway, he, was, he thought, okay, this could be a fun, just a Monday night game. Then we thought, well, let's just play it for the channel. Why not? Oh my God. I recorded myself, was it 30 minutes, the episode, maybe? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just doing the tutorial by myself, because you can only play the tutorial. There's like four missions you have to play alone before co-op play opens up for the game i'm talking about mech warrior 5 i don't know if i actually said those words in a string yet but that's that's the subject matter here we're talking about and so i've recorded myself playing the tutorial and i put that video up on monday this past monday uh the 14th of november i it got more views than any other episode one of any other series I've done. Well, now it has more views than anything else we've ever put up, ever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's what I'm... Yes, that's what I... Okay, episode one. (laughs) At least at the time I took my note here, five minutes before we started recording, had 787... Excuse me. 797 views. Which... By comparison, my playthrough of Dead Space Episode 1 has 111. Chaos Gate has 128. And that was when I started playing the game. It was brand spanking new. Like, day one, I released Chaos Gate Episode 1, and it got, like, 60 views on day one. I was so excited. Small channel, guys. We're, you brand know. Brand new. We're, we're. We're chugging along here. So when we get like double digits of views on something, I remember when my first episode of the very first 
uh, series, Mutant Year Zero. And when I got hit like 20 views on that, I was like, oh my God, it's awesome. There's people watching it. To get, I think on day one, this was like well over 500 views. And then it it's was, gotten it another. 534. Yeah, it's gotten about another two or 300 since, since then in the last two days. So I'm looking at it right now, and it's currently, as of the moment I pulled up the app, 799 views. Oh, we're almost at 800. Okay. Almost at 800. So, I mean, we're talking eight times the number of views than our hi- highest viewed other videos that are months old. They've had months to accumulate that number of views, except for Dead Space. That's only a month old. But also, the thing that's most exciting to me is that so far, that video alone has attracted 23 additional subscribers. We'll go weeks without a new subscriber. And we'll get one. I remember a couple of weeks ago, we got three in one day. And I was yeah. like, over the moon. I was like, that is so exciting. We got three new subs in a day. 23 subscribers just from this one Mech Warrior episode one, which is just me playing the tutorial. So many comments from viewers and I'm hoping new subscribers who are like, hey, like almost like welcome to the mech warrior family. Here's some tips when you get, you know, buy this mech and put this thing on it and, you know, can't wait to see more. And it was just like, I felt so almost embraced by this community. I had no idea that this community existed, but there was just this, I mean, outpouring from my perspective of support from these people who were watching and and being excited uh it was it was great i remember one guy well anyway i don't want to like out people but it was just it's been really exciting to to see and i mean to the point we've been discussing okay well i think we said it last episode mech warrior monday tabletop tuesday uh vampire Vampire wednesday Wednesday. (laughs) and vamp and thursday and friday (laughs) but now I'm thinking, do we need to switch that and make it Mech Warrior, make Mech Warrior a couple of episodes a week? Or do we go with, do we stick with Mech Warrior Monday and like that's our thing and people can hopefully look forward to Mondays because there's a new Mech Warrior? I don't know. I, I think know, given the number of. This is the crazy that's going on in my head right now. I'm like, what do we do with this new information? It's like, it's It's wild. Well, I think we could officially say that No Games for Old Men is now a Mech Warrior Stan account, uh, and uh, <laughs> uh, if nothing else, you will see new episodes on Monday because mm-hmm. the number of schedules that have to be juggled to make that consistent that is pretty substantial. That is the big hurdle: is that the point is to play co-op. Yeah, and there, you know, there's three minimum different schedules to juggle. Now, fortunately, the way Mech Warrior 5 co-op works is that there is the host player. The host can hire pilots at right. industrial hubs. And these are AI characters that pilot other mechs that you happen to own in battles. If you have a co-op partner or partners up to three, they will embody those pilots and pilot those mechs. So if, and they do not lose any progress in their own campaigns if they are playing the story themselves. So it doesn't affect positively or negatively their personal campaign. They join you as a temporary assignment and off you go, you go, you have fun, you take out some bandits, you raid some mining operations and you earn some sea bills. Right. And, but the benefit there is that if someone's not available, you can still play. So we've already recorded a session with Scott and Jeff, excuse me, old man, Scott and old man, Jeff. And, uh, (laughs) 
the following session, Jeff was not available, so it was just me and Scott. And, you know, and it works fine. So uh, there, there's the benefit is that it, you know, there may be a time when both of them are unavailable and I'll just have to do a mission by myself again with, with the AI pilots. So I think that will help production being able to it means make we can episodes. commit to at least once a week. Yes, you are. That is correct. At least Mech Warrior Monday. Right. And then maybe, depending. Yeah. Except yeah. in March, when we'll do every day Mech Warrior March Madness. You're going to do the graphics and the Mech fireworks. Mech Warrior March. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't I can't commit to that I don't know I don't know. it's five uh, months away who knows it, it, it could happen it could happen I don't know we'll see we'll see if anyway. the trend continues mm-hmm. if next Monday's uh, uh, episode <laughs> totally flops then it, never yeah. mind yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if suddenly then, if suddenly interest is like vampire oh I like that oh. game guys check out my vampire playthrough it is such a neat game it's an unusual game it is great atmosphere it's a good autumn game because it's 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 brown. It's night, and it's gloomy, and it's muted. And if you uh, ever want to see saturation. somebody get their ass kicked, like oh, repeatedly, yeah, this today's repeatedly. today's episode against today my was hard to watch. First attack. Hey, come on, man! <laughs> you got you got beat hard. I did, I did, and you know it happens. You got slapped it around like a seal by an orca. Yeah, it's it's easy to talk when you when you don't have to defend yourself, do you? You with it's your little true. Mac Mini. That's yeah. yeah, yeah. Come come down here. Let's see you play. Let's see you. I, I play tabletop games. Uh huh. As I present the figures <laughs> that you can't see over to my left. Anyway, I, mean, I guess that's another thing I'm hyped about this week is just the performance of of that Mech Warrior video and the outpouring of support from viewers and commenters who are who seem excited to see what happens next. Because they so there's more coming. It's great. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. Well, good. Good, good, good. All right. Well, that's this week's show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell, and do all the things in the doobly-doo. We look forward to your comments. Down here. Uh, And for all of our new subscribers, more Mech Warrior on Monday. See you then. Yep.